Hi, viewers. Welcome back to Get Your Geechee On with your TV producer, Blondina Mitchell. Today, I'm in the studio uh, with Dr. Fazanta Byers, and she is the granddaughter of the founder of the original Geechee Gala Festival of Beaufort. Welcome, Dr. Fazanta. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Can you uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. Well, like you said, I am the oldest granddaughter of Mrs. Rosalie Pizant. And first of all, thank you for having me here. This is really, I'm, this is really exciting to be here and, uh, and, and to meet you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, my mother is Mrs. Pizant's oldest daughter, Loretta. My mother's name is Loretta. And I have two siblings, Alvin Hicks and Roy Hicks. Uh, Alvin unfortunately passed in 2010, but it, but the four of us I'll moved from that. Beaufort to Atlanta uh, in the 70s, and I've been living in Atlanta, South Carolina, Boston, a few places. Um, but I during that time I became the proud mother of four wonderful children, uh, Kamaria, Saida, Salia, and Jelani. And I now have 10 grandchildren. Okay. Awesome. And I also, <laughs> thank you. And um, I, I also am the owner of the Mikaba Publishing Company. I'm a writer, poet, and uh, editor. And so uh, what I wanted to share with you today, uh, when we're, you know, as we're discussing the Gullah culture and Gullah Festival, uh, in two of my books, I discuss the encounters with the unseen in the Gullah Islands. And also I write poetry and so forth. Uh, one thing I like to stress is the celebration of ancestors in the Low Country and the, the respect for um, the unseen. <laughs> That's all I can say. But uh, so if you, if you like, I can go ahead and start sharing some stories with you. And um, and if the first story I like to share is uh, it's called the Church on Frogmore Island. And uh, when I think I was 19 or 20 years old, I was uh, with my grandmother Rosalie. Uh, well, we call her Rosalie. <laughs> and so I was riding with Rosalie um, on Frogmore Island. She was passing out some church programs. So she just said, well, just wait in the car. I'll be right back. So she went and she was talking to one of her church members. So there was a church, maybe like 50 feet, 50 to 100 feet in front of me. And so I'm in the car and I'm looking through the magazine. And as it got darker, I heard singing and clapping and, you know, foot stomping. And I said to myself, wow, they're, they're sure having a good time in there, you know, so. Then my grandmother came, she jumps in the car, she locks the doors. And I said, Rosalie, what's wrong? She didn't say anything. And I said again, I said, well, what's wrong? Did somebody say something to hurt you or what, what's going on? She said, Bazani, you don't hear them, them dead people over there having church. I said, what? She said, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she said, look up at the church, it's boarded up. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh my God. I mean, you could hear clear as days as I'm talking to you. And, uh, yes. and so we just, she drove off. Me and my grandmother were very quiet in the car. <laughs> we just, I, I just, I was amazed. And I was amazed, number one, because it was so clear. It was you would have thought someone was literally in the church, physically having church. I mean, hand clapping, foot stomping, singing, all of that. And another wait, thing so I- wait a, minute. So, so, uh -huh. so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wanna make sure the viewers get this. Okay, so you and your grandmother heard this. Yes, both of us heard it, yes. Oh yeah, she gosh. heard it. <laughs> And the thing about it is that what I thought was so interesting is that the neighbors, that was common occurrences to them. You know, it was a common occurrence. 
And I was like, wow, the, the fact that, of course, they did not tear the church down, they let it stay there, um, said to me at 19 years old, wow, there's a lot of respect for uh, ancestors, for those who transitioned over to the other side, and that they still praise God. So I just thought that that was really, really wonderful. And uh, that was my, uh, among my first experiences uh, with the unseen in, in uh, the low country there. <laughs> so about what age, about what age did this happen for you? What age was it? Yeah, I was like 19, I believe I was 19, 20, 19, something like that. I believe I was 19 years old because I was in college at Savannah State. So yeah, I was definitely a college student. I would oftentimes come home on the weekend and be there with my grandmother. So, yeah. So did you did you share this with your mother or your father about your experience or Well, I mean, I, my grandmother and I once we got, <laughs> once we got in the car, um you know, we re we were quiet. It was you know, we, 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 it was unbelievable for me. I I just I'd never seen or heard anything like that. And the thing about it uh, was that it caught me off guard because I was in the car reading a magazine with my window down. You know, I was in the car reading a magazine. So I wasn't thinking about, you know, was this real or not? I just know I heard it. And I commented and I said, wow, that they're really having a good time in there. You know, and I just kept reading. And only when my grandmother got in the car and when she said, you don't hear them dead people over there having church, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So, yeah, that was um, truly a real experience. She heard it. I heard it. And I'm quite sure the neighbors, you know, often hear it too. So, and I thought that would, it was something that was fascinating to write about, you know, that when people want to know about the low country, um, they need to understand that there, when you go there, and especially at night, that it's it's not uh, to be scary or spooky, but it's a, ma it's a matter of respecting uh, the fact that the unseen does exist there. And it's real. It's definitely real. So this and, was was so this was the beginning of your writing. Is this when you started began to write, or were you writing prior to that? Because I, I know you said you were nineteen when this occurred, but had oh, you yeah. been writing I, prior to that? Yes, I actually started writing at the age of twelve. I've been writing uh, poetry. Uh huh. At the at the age of twelve is when I started. And um, some of my uh, idols were uh, Ruby D and Ossie Davis. That was the first time I ever heard them take poetry and then uh, do spoken word. And when I heard it, I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful. So that's how I'm supposed to say it. <laughs> like yeah, that. So, yeah. 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 So. Uh, but they were so how, my through, awesome. So down through the years, how have you uh, used your ability ability to write to uh, write books to incorporate that into the original Gala Festival of Beaufort? Well, um, I've written poetry about uh, the Gala uh, Geechee. You know, I write love poems. Um, one of my first poems I wrote about. The Geechee's, Geechee men was um, after seeing the movie, A Soldier Story. And I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but in that movie, the sergeant was coming down hard on one of his, uh, his, his uh, soldiers. And one of the guys, he was like, the day of the Geechee is dead. And he just, you know, he came down so hard on this man and he just... It, he just made Geechee men look so bad. So I wrote a poem called Geechee Lover. And, I, you know, it's a family, it's a decent poem. It's good. <laughs> you know, children can hear it. But um, that was the first time I actually wrote something about, with the word Geechee in it, but with an appreciation of, um, you know, Geechee people. So mm -hmm. well, you, you want to hear it? <laughs> 
Yes, yes. But before you get into the point, what exactly is a Geechee man? Well, <laughs> Geechee, <laughs> a Geechee, a Geechee man. Yeah. Um, no, just the the people in the the um, Gullah Islands, just from the Gullah gotcha. Islands, and they're called Geechees. Uh huh. So yeah, that's. But yes, the, please share, share the point with the viewers, please. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's called Geechee Lover. Um, you're my pretty Geechee man, wooing on beach, water, sand, your velvet darkness, black as blue, regal shadow against the stars and moon, your eyes so bright and teeth so white and strength as firm as oak. Your love is naive, sweet as palm trees, my fancy you tease and poke. Oh, love me, man, and hold me near so I can feel your skin, which glistens with warm ocean juices. I just might let you in. This night is so right, me with you, Geechee night, serenaded by the waves dancing. Let's stop the time and abide in the light of our island's exotic prancing. Let's you are a phenomenal poet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, what, so, what year did you what year did you write that? I wrote this in I think it was 1985, 86. When whenever the, the movie A Soldier Story came out, that's when I wrote it. In retaliation awesome. to the movie. <laughs> It was an excellent okay. movie with Denzel Washington, you know, and all that. It was a wonderful movie now. But I was like, wait a minute now, you can't talk about Geechee's. <laughs> can't talk bad about Geechee's. So I had to write something. <laughs> yeah. Well, this poem you speak of, it's in publication, right? So how would the viewers, if they wanted to, you know, uh, uh, get the book mm -hmm. or? Yes, it's, um, it's, in my, mm -hmm, it's in my book called um, The Gathered Petals. And um, I actually have it right here. Um, it's called the gathered. I don't know if, it, but but anyway, it's called the gathered petals, and it's on Amazon.com. On Amazon. Okay, the gathered petals. Uh huh. And it's awesome. the poetic, the poetic life of a Gullah Yamasi woman. Uh -huh. Awesome, awesome. So tell me, Doctor Fazanta, how many books have you written all together? I've written three books and I have edit, um, I've edited one that's on Amazon called um, I Am Not My Hair. It's about a, a minister, uh, Ethleen Jatan, and she shares her experience of her hair loss. Uh, and then I'm also editing another book, um, The Ruth Meeks Story. So um, she shares her, you know, experience of triumph and overcoming, uh, oh my God, just you know, abuse and everything. It's really very, very good. So, and I, and I really attracted to human interest stories that talk about overcoming and triumphing, triumph over hardship and what seem like insurmountable obstacles. Mm -hmm. Yes. So all of those, those two books are available on Amazon as well. Yes. The, the first book, yes, it is available on Amazon. The second book, the Ruth Meek story, I'm still in the process of editing that, but that will be on uh, Amazon by the end of February. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Okay, so tell me uh, tell me a little bit about the upcoming Original Gala Festival. Uh, if any of the viewers should come, would they be able to uh, obtain any of these books there as well, as well as get an autograph? Yes, yes, they yeah. will. I will have um, all three books. Um, and uh, my books are The Gathered Petals, uh, The Thin Veil, and Reaping the Sheaves. And uh, so, yes, there are all three of my books will be there. And, uh, of course, if the other authors want, want to be there and, and sell their books, they'll be there also. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your experience growing up in the Buford area, um, your grandmother being the founder um, I'm pretty sure you were dear to her heart and you can see the passion that she had, um, oh, yeah. at, you know, as putting yeah. these festivals together. So let's speak. A, can you speak a little bit uh, about that? You know, um, her passion for 
this festival and how uh, it how it also affected you growing up. And you know, if you want to, if you could just share a little bit about that with the viewers, that would be awesome. Yeah, my grandmother. You know, what impressed me about my grandmother is that she was such a hard worker, so committed, so dedicated. And I remember the day one day she said she and a friend of hers, Mary Dawson. They were going to go to drive to uh, south of the border and pass out pamphlets for the Gullah Festival. And that's when I realized that, wow, when you want something to happen, you have to make it happen yourself. You know, she didn't just mail it to them. She drove to south of the border, which is, I think, um, it's about three hours, three, four hours from Beaufort. And to, to distribute um, pamphlets for the Gala Festival. Um, I, I, so yeah, she really impressed me with that in terms of her hard work, her dedication. Um, I was just telling a friend of mine today, the, one of the reasons why I don't have stage fright is because um, I've seen how my grandmother gets up on stage, makes it happen. Um, there are times I've had to just get up on stage, make it happen, not be stage fright. And so um, I just, I watched my grandmother take command of herself in front of audiences. Um, and uh, she was just, she was a classy lady, just so classy. Um, she was just my, my hero, my shero. She really, really was my shero. I loved watching her. Uh, uh, how she carried herself as a lady, how she talked to others. She was funny. She had a great sense of humor. Um, I just, I just love being around her. You know, there's some people you admire so much till I'd be like, you know, like this, <laughs> just yeah, watching her yeah. and, and what, and listening to her talk. She loved to, to dance with my grandfather, um, um, Edward Pizant, and they would swing dance. You know, they used to like to swing all the time, swing dance. And um, they were just so smooth on the dance floor. You know, I just, it was just, she was wonderful, just wonderful and extremely intelligent, but yet she was humble. And uh, I remember one day um, someone called her and asked her whether or not if she could participate in something. And she said, well, yes, I would like to, but let me discuss it with my husband first. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, this lady, <laughs> she is so intelligent and independent, but yet she respected her husband. You know, she respected the marriage. I, I just, she was just so wonderful, you know, and she was also the type grandmother that you could tell her anything anything and she would not judge you she would not put you mm. down you know what i'm saying yes um yes. and when she um started with the gala festival i remember uh my grandmother uh charlotte mont lolita um and reba and they were sitting around and they were you know trying to come up with this festival you know how, how to start this this festival, what to call it, why they want to have it. And Rosalie said, my grandmother said that she remembers when her uh, students would come in from the, um, when her students would come in from her, uh, the islands into her class. And she said that um, they would be embarrassed to speak Gullah. And so she said one of the reasons why she wanted to have the Gullah Festival is because she wanted her students to be proud of the culture that was on the island. Now, this was in 1984, of course, before there, before Gullah was popular. You know, it was just, you know, her students were coming in, speaking Gullah, afraid to say it, speak it, and ashamed. And so she said she wanted the Gullah Festival to bring attention to um, the Gullah culture so that people could appreciate it, that they could uh, value this gem that yes. no one knew of, you know, that uh, it, you know, they just considered the people over their country or couldn't speak or that they spoke broken English. But my grandmother recognized that it was more than that. She recognized yes. that it was a 
an entire culture. And she wanted to bring light to that. And then my Aunt Lolita said, well, why don't we just call it the Gullah Festival? And so that's how it was born. And I, I actually witnessed it being born. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't in the meeting, but I was sitting there yes. like this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 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 So, so, what, so it sounds like your grandma, your grandmother was an educator as well. Absolutely. She spoke in, I, she taught English um, at uh, Buford High School. And then she also uh, taught English at Savannah State University. Mm -hmm. So I see that there's a legacy of uh, educators in your family. You know, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, let's, um, if you would like, could you share like another poem with what with the viewers? One of your favorites? Sure. And I have a poem called um, I have a poem called the festival the the gala. I actually wrote a poem about the gala festival, so I can read that. Yes. Uh, okay. By all means. By all okay. means. Okay, this is called The Festival, The Gullah. I hear rhythms in the wind blowing through my skin, sending chills and thrills, carrying me within to universal beginnings, which soulfully danced its manifesting self into existence through the sun-kissed, burnt-skinned humans, children of the gods. Yes, they were here at the very beginning. God fashioned hair for royal crowns, which we wore and wear so beautifully at the Gullah Festival. I see smiles so warm here, glowing and sparkling as the sun, as it dances on oceans, waves, and ripples, warm rays blossoming chrysanthemums and picturesque African greenery. I see home again at the Gullah Festival. What's that sound? Where's it coming from? Do I hear ritualistic drum calls on the fanfares from the motherland? Yes, I hear the drum calls echoing over the waterfront waves at the Gala Festival. I smell seasonings hot and spicy, sweet and tempting, cooking through soulful delicacies made for my taste buds, leaving me no resistance and tearing down all barriers that once stopped me from indulging, that once stopped me from being myself. I am free. I can be my soulful and expressive me at the Gala Festival. Come join the love, the fun, and the celebration of ourselves. We Gala and we proud. Bright colors slapping in the wind. Garments and jewelry and crafts to begin. Music with jazz and drums to tremor your soul. Storytellers, dancers, the African legacy made whole. Come home and rest, lay your burdens aside. You'll see why the universe smiles on the Gullah Festival. Oh my gosh, you have definitely set uh, not, not only a vision of what the Gullah Festival is about, but all those creative words. You are definitely a poet at heart. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now I love that, it. Yes. Yes. Now that poem that you just read, um, is that like something that's totally separate or is that within a book that they also could? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. This is also in the gathered petals, the, the poet, my book of poetry, the gathered petals. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's in yeah. here. And the book and the uh, story that I told you about the church, that's in my book called The Thin Veil. So yeah, the thin. Tell us a little bit uh, about that book. How 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 did that come about? Well, um, uh, as I was saying uh, about the my experience with the church and my right. grandmother and the, you know, uh huh. Right. So that book, um, it just I wanted to show how ancestors engage. Uh, but for for example, quickly, there's a, a story when my grandmother was trying to find a location for mm -hmm. what's called the uh, marker, the historic marker that they wanted to put in Port Royal. So the mayor gave my grandmother five locations to choose from where the slaves came into the ports in Port Royal. Uh, so my grandmother took my cousin Bill and they went out and they took pictures of the five locations. So my grandmother said to me, well, we took pictures of all these places, but I 
she says, I'm not really sure which one. She said, but this one here, it didn't come out. The, the picture didn't come out. So I said, really, let me look at it. And I saw it. And there were five figures. It was, you know how the camera sometimes can pick up uh, <laughs> uh, what we say are ghosts or unseen or whatever. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh -huh. it picked up five figures that were standing at one particular location. Each figure had an Afro. And wow. um, yeah, each figure had an Afro. And I think they're like two of them were younger, like children, but they were standing like holding hands. And um, I said to my grandmother, I said, well, Rosalie, I think this one here is where the, the ancestors want the marker. And I showed it to her and she said, well, I guess they picked it out for me. And that's mm -hmm. where the marker is today. Okay. So that so marker it, right it now. Just, that's how. It, okay. So that marker I'm right sorry? now, that marker right now is in Port Royal. Is that correct? Yes. It's in Port Royal. Yes. Yes. It's, that's correct. It's in Port Royal and it's, in the location where the slaves were bought into South Carolina in that area. But that's yes. a very important, uh, that's, uh, that's a very important marker. So, um, Dr. Oh, yes. Presanta, to someone who has never been to the original Gala Festival, um, what would you say at this point would be the reason why, particularly this year, that they need to come out and uh, be a part of this very special event? Well, you know what? It's like a homecoming. It's mm -hmm. like a family reunion. Uh, I see people that I've that I've been to elementary school when I get there. Um, there are people who come from all over the world, um, and it's so wonderful. It's it's a celebration of ourselves, and not only as Gullah, but as African people or people from Sierra Leone, West Africa. Um, you will see people, you know, wares, jewelry, uh, pocketbooks, shoes, you know, <laughs> things we women love. Uh, but there's also food and um, music, dancing, and it's all day, all day. It's Friday, Saturday, and half day Sunday. Uh, it's it's a place to come to just really see authentic culture that you don't see anywhere else. Anywhere else in the world, it's it, you see that in at the Gala Festival. Yes. You see that. Yes. Viewers, um, you have heard it from the mouth of Dr. Fazant Byers. She has so graciously um, imparted to us today some of her poems. Uh, she's an awesome poet, and um, she has expressed to us she has her own publishing company. And she is the daughter of the, orig the, uh, the original founder, the only founder of Grand the original Bella Festival of Buford. So Dr. Grand granddaughter. granddaughter, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. So Dr. Pazanta, we certainly uh, thank you for coming on today to share your poems and the history um, of the original Gala Festival. And, and we, I look at the original Gala Festival. Of course, this is the first year, but I look forward to meeting you there. So okay. viewers, we just want to thank you for coming on today. And again, Dr. Rosanta, thank you for coming on the Get Your Geechee On uh, TV show and look forward to seeing you at the uh, festival in May. All right. Thank you so much. And visit me at, at www.mikaba-publishing.com. And I'll give you the con my contact information, you know, as well. So thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.